Combined variation is when you're combining one or more uh, types of variation. For example, direct variation, inverse variation, or uh, joint variation. So just to quickly refresh, direct variation is gonna be in the form y equals a times x. Notice that uh, a is your constant of variation. Some books like to use the letter k or even another variable. But y and x, you can see they're varying directly when they're in this form. Inverse, y equals a divided by x. So you can see that the variable x is in the denominator when it's inverse. And then when it's joint, you can see y varies jointly with x and z. You can see x and z are multiplied together. They're in the numerator, and you also have that constant of variation. So you're always gonna have that a value in there, that constant. So let's go through two examples. I'll show you how to work with this. So the first one, it says y varies jointly with x and the cube of z and inversely with m. Okay, let's just stop right there. So see if we can write that equation. We have y varies jointly with x and the cube of z. So we have x times z cubed. Then it says and inversely with m. So inversely, I'm gonna put that quantity in the denominator. Now notice, this looks slightly different than what we talked about here with the joint variation because it said y varies jointly with x and the cube of z, meaning z to the third power, and then inversely with m. Now they give us some information to help us solve for the a value, the constant of variation. They say when y is 32, so let's put that in, x is negative one, z is two, and m is four. So the reason they're giving us that information is so we can solve for a, we've got two cubed is eight, times negative one is negative eight, divided by four is negative two. So we have 32 equals negative two a. If we divide both sides by negative two, you can see that our constant of variation, our a value is negative 16. We can put that back in for a there, and now we've got a more specific equation. So y equals negative 16 x z cubed all divided by uh, m. So now it says, find out what y is when x is three, z is negative one, and m is four. So we're just gonna substitute these values in now. You can see this is gonna be negative 16 times three times negative one cubed, all divided by four. So if we simplify that down, let's see, we get uh, negative one cubed is negative one, times negative 16 is positive 16, times three is 48, divided by four is 12. So you can see y equals 12. Okay, let's do another example. See if you can do this one on your own. It says L varies inversely with C and directly with the square root of D. Okay, let's stop right there for a moment. So how would you write that equation? Well, let's see, we've got L varies inversely with C. So that means that that's gonna go in the denominator, the C value. We have our constant of variation A and directly with the square root of D. So directly, that's gonna be in the numerator, square root of D. Okay, good, now they give us some information. It says if L is four, when D is nine and C is six, find out what L is when D is 16 and C is 32. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna substitute. We say what, if L is four, when D is nine, okay, so putting nine in place of D and C equals six, let's go ahead and solve for A now. We've got square root of nine, which is three. So we have four equals three A over six which three divided by six is one half, so we have four times one half a. If we multiply both sides by two, you can see that a is coming out to eight. So if we take that eight and put it back in for a, now we have a more specific equation that we can work with. So L equals eight times the square root of d all divided by c. But now it says, find out what L is when d is 16. Okay, d is 16 and c is 32. So square root of 16 is four, so we have eight times four divided by 32. Eight times four is 32, divided by 32 is just equal to one, so you can see that L is equal to one. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna work through, you know, setting up the general equation, solve for your constant of variation, and then the third step is to substitute in the, the final value so you can find out what that outcome is. So great job. If you wanna see more examples working with direct variation, inverse variation, joint variation, check out the videos I have right there and I'll see you over in those videos. I'll talk to you soon.